Fashion world's interesting, you know, as far as who, who would be your biggest influence. I always like, you know, John Paul, John Paul Gaultier stuff and, 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 and Mew, uh, Mugler, Terry Mugler, because they, they kind of design outside of the, outside of the norm. Uh, they have extraordinary pieces there. Their art, their fashion is art. My fashion, I consider to be art as well. I, I, you know, I execute those things like their art. As far as what I like to wear, you know, I, I like, you know, how Prada and Gucci and Armani um, execute their their clothing. When you're looking, when you're gonna look nice for the evening, um, but. I, I kick around all the time in race jackets, blue jeans, and uh, race shirts. Uh, some race shirts that, that I put together myself. You know, I sew all the patches on them, or, uh, or I'll buy them in tracks around the world. I, I collect a lot of vintage fashion for girls, and um, we often <coughs> uh, dress the models in here. Sometimes we dress them before we go out. If a girl comes over and doesn't really have something to wear, or, or I have something really cool she's got to try on, she'll try it on, and I'm like, we'll go, okay, well, you look great in that, so let's go out. So it's not uncommon for me to be walking around with a girl that I've dressed. There are a handful of designers that I look at for inspiration, and Sid Mead's definitely one, and, and I'm definitely not the only one that looks at, you know, a Sid Mead design book, and, you know, to get excited about diving into your next project. His work is very inspiring, it's fantastic. Um, so looking at his work is, is, is great. It doesn't take long to understand the trend of today's trend or future trend. I mean, like, you spend uh, a few hours at the auto show and you can see that Automotive design is, is moving in a certain direction. And um, everybody kind of follows suit. You know, there, I don't see anybody like standing out dramatically in one direction or the other. But that's normal. That's been that, like that for years and years and years. I mean, look at this Cobra. I mean, there's been, during the years of this Cobra, there was a lot of cars with two round lamps and a big intake in between them, a big round mouth. And they were a front engine car with two door, with two doors and uh, two passenger. So this is a formula that was very common back then. And uh, there's formulas that are common today. Now and then, somebody breaks through and discovers a different way to approach it and and if it's successful then you can see the whole industry kind of like going over to that side and then it becomes again the general direction. I would say that most of you know the cars today BMW, Audi, even even the Japanese cars, with Mercedes and Mercedes and 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 the direction that that Ford's going with their cars, they they definitely share a lot of the same qualities. You know, the the size now, the size of a vehicle and how how wide that door is now and how tall the car is, and that's also everybody can get in easy, ingress and egress is nice and safe. Um, they have to all respect a lot of the same laws and rules for safety and function. So, you know, that pretty soon <laughs> it starts squeezing everything into a proportion that, uh, that becomes very common. The cars look fluid, they have to be aerodynamic. You know, they, you know, they have to respect that as well. So they, they all kind of have the same kind of plan view in the front and the way the lights wrap around you know the front to the sides each one has their own significant graphic dna like audi they all look like audis because they have that big giant grill i'm not such a big fan of that i think it kind of looks like a panda then there's bmw you know and they're always re-approaching how to do their their double kidney grill and, and the two lamps that 
they've all walked away from the round lamps that used to be a signature for them for so long. Now, now every, now everything is more um, linear and has more dynamics as far as you know shape and proportion. The way it starts wide and gets thin, and and the lights themselves have become uh, very high tech in the way they can be, you know, function and lit. So. All these things are, are changing the, the personality and the expression of, of the headlamps. And it's neat to see all that. I think the cars are getting more aggressive. Uh, they're definitely getting braver. They're exploring hard. I mean, it's a lot of very young, you know, enthusiastic designers out there, you know, hitting it, you know, hard and trying to be different than anybody else so you, you can never underestimate you know the power behind all that so everyone is trying to come up with something clever that has a very good expression and uh, you know and, and can be functional and not too expensive to, to fabricate the future of automobile you know with all the power of technology behind it you know, it's going to take cars to different levels. They're going to be more efficient. Um, the safety part's the part that scares me because whenever safety gets involved, it's usually not very attractive. The cars look different today than they have like many years ago. You know, I definitely like my 67 Fastback and I'm looking for another Mustang, but I don't know if I'm gonna go much later than 69. <laughs> that those cars, the proportions of them are, are, they look so much lighter, leaner, agile. They, the shapes are fantastic, and today's cars, to me, look kind of heavy and thick. I, I definitely wouldn't want to spend my money on that. There are cars that I do like. There are cars that I think are executed very nicely and do not fall short of any of the fantastic cars from their years past, including this. And I would say if I could go and just buy a car today, a contemporary car that is state of the art, that I think is designed very nicely and looks good on the street, that would probably be an Aston Martin Vantage. I do like the 458 Ferrari. I think that's the best Ferrari that's been designed since the 1984 GTO. I was never a fan of, of the um, 550s or 348 or any of the 360s, that whole evolution up to the, you know, that, that whole shape, I was not a fan of that at all. I prefer the older Ferraris, but today's 458, that, that's a good looking car. Looking at the Corvette at the auto show, I, um, I liked the way they executed the lines that went over the, the rear quarter and the front fender. You can see that they're trying to get the body to be as confident and have that impact that the vets used to have, I, I would say, in the, in the 70s. The old Stingrays, you know, with the, the beautiful flying buttress in the back and the, the hard cut rear, um, rear fascia. So I can see that kind of, you know, that kind of excitement developing in the Corvette. And I'm much happier with the front end and the headlamps because I, you know, I did not like the, the front end on the recent vets. I don't think things have to be complicated to be good. You know, I think the, the right dynamic lines and almost less is, is always better. I didn't like the fact that the headlamp, the tail lamps weren't very round. I thought it needed the, the circles in there, not completely just circles, but I thought it needed circles back there just to say Corvette, you know. It's nice to have circles on the back of a Ferrari in the, in the tail lamps. And I do like the way that they integrate the Ferrari lamp and it cuts into the body you know, because the circle pierces the, uh, the height of the body. Uh, that's very creative. 
Um, I think the Corvette needed that to keep its identity and when I looked at the front I was trying to you know look at it and see if I see the, the identity, the DNA, the, the personality of a Corvette because they, their headlamps were, were quite advanced. But to tell you the truth, I was just very happy that the headlamps were a lot better than the last recent ones. I just don't like those at all. I have a studio in LA because there's a lot of things going on in LA. I mean, you need to be there to feel that energy and get involved. When you're there, things start happening. Uh, you may be working on a program, but something else is going to spin off because somebody was there and you saw somebody at this, at a studio or a reception and you know, they came up and said, hey, didn't you work on that, didn't you do this, will you help me with this project or I'm working on something I'd like you to see and meet some people. So all this starts happening and the only way that that's going to happen is if you're in L.A. And, um, there's a lot of cool things about Detroit, but let me tell you, there's a lot of great places around the world and you gotta be there. So, you can't be everywhere, but being out in California is a very good vibe and uh, I feel at home in California. You know, I, all I need is something like this and um, the beach and, you know, just that whole atmosphere. I, you know, it's just fantastic, I like it.